Hey guys, what's up? Um, this is going to be a hopefully under 30 minute video. <laughs> so, I'm going to show what I'm working on, what I finished, and and I've actually been spinning. So, I'll show you guys that. Alright, so I'm going to start with my spinning. Um, as you guys know, when I go to, for the last couple of years, when I go to Maryland Sheep and Wool, I sit in the Walks Far Acres booth and I spin and run my mouth with the ladies there. And one of the sheep that I used to get the wool from, her name was Velvet. And she is a a light beigey Morit oat milly. It's like a, a golden oat milly color. She's a very she's not White or more and more is close, but um, and she I don't think she's with us any longer. I think she passed away. So I went upstairs to the attic and I pulled some wool fiber to spin from small bags. I'm trying to get rid of the older bags, but the smaller quantities. I'm trying to spin that up. And so her her fiber was very nippy. And this is something that I carded because it was starting to felt. Velvet is a is a churro. Um, it's either cordial or something mixed, but she they they don't coat their elements. So this is something that I carded on the drum carter from the Rover. I have two bags of that. Um, her fiber is atypical for churro. Is uh, because these sheep have more landland because they're on the east coast and they're up in Pennsylvania, so they get they have to produce more landland to survive the winters um, and waterproof their fleece. So the fleece are, is very soft. It's, it's, her fleece is atypical um, of the breed, but I got um. Three bobbins of uh, fingerless, fingerless singles. So once, because this is gonna be very poofy. So once it's plied, and it'll be a three ply, it will be a nice, uh, light, light worsted. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. It might be a little bit more sport, but I'm hoping I'll get a light worsted out of it. Um, yeah. So. So that's the spinning I've been doing, and because that took up three bobbins, now I have to ply um, my remaining bobbin. And so I, I started with plying a uh, remnant skein alpaca bobbin that I had spun. So it has like some brown alpaca, some gray alpaca, because all alpaca is on this bobbin. So it's a three ply, and it's a sock weight, fingering weight yarn. Um, it might go to a heavy finger once I wash it and it fools, but, uh, yeah. So, that's the spinning that I've been doing. Um, finished objects. I have two finished objects. The first is, uh, some fingers gloves. And they're black. I haven't put the thumbs in them. Um, probably not gonna put thumbs in them. They're for a guy. But, um, but I made them shorter. So, this one of them. It's got a weave in the ends. I don't count. I don't. I have a counters. I don't use them. Uh, I hate counting. To keep track of a project, I kind of I eyeball it. So, but I do a pretty good job of eyeballing. So, yeah. Every once in a while, like you know, for the the base here, I I went and I counted after the fact to see how many rows I had done of the ribbon. And this is a one by one rib at the base. These were done on size seventy pins, and then um, one by one rib at the top. So yeah, I think I did a pretty good good job of my eyeballing. <laughs> and um 
but I just gotta weave in the ends on this pair, this this one of the pair, and they'll be ready. And then I gotta probably run the net brush over it because I think Mushi tried to steal this out of my bag. Mushi uh, is a kitten. Well, she's a cat now. She's old enough to be a cat, but she's my kitten. But Mushi likes fiber. She likes wool. She kept trying to steal these bats. What she planned on doing with it, I don't know. I didn't want to find out. So that's why Mushi and I had a fight and I got that away from her. <laughs> so my other finished object is behind me. Oh. It is a my first virus shawl. That was on my list of things that I wanted to do. Oh, I forgot to turn that fan off. I probably sound horrible. Hold up. Alright. So, it was on my list of things to do, which was to crochet a virus shawl. And yeah, apparently my spinning wheel wants it more than I do. Uh, I used the Burnett. I think it's Burnett. It's not the Burnett. It's, I don't know. It's, it's a single ply. I showed it to you guys before. I got it from, um, and I don't have, I don't know where the ball band is. Excuse me. I got it from, um, Argyle Yarn Shop in, in Brooklyn over off of Park Place, uh, somewhere over there. But, the it came out really nice and the border is red heart uh the carrot colorway but i love this crochet shawl and it was so freaking easy to do and i love it so much that i started another one and see this uses three skeins of that brunette and just just a little bit of the skein uh i just did one of the row row four or whatever it's like Four, five, six, seven. I think that's how it goes. So I just did one repeat, basically for the border. But I love the, the shawl. It's, it's gorgeous, 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 and it's warm. But I I enjoyed making it so much that I yesterday morning I cast on another one, and this is. Also, I had three skeins of Noro Silk Garden. Also, that, that I got also, yeah, I can't even talk to that. That I got from Argyle Yarn Shop when I went up to Brooklyn. And this was the color number 319, lot D. So I got three, three skeins of this. Okay. And I'll show you my progress. I'm putting the border on it now because I've run. This is all the Nora. I didn't have enough. To, I've had enough to finish the last the part of repeat. And um, that's all that's left. So I'll use this to start something. Or maybe not. If the cat is still it, they'll, they'll just eat it. <laughs> Get their fiber in. So. Yeah. This I don't know if you guys can see that purple, but the 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 border that I'm putting on it's actually a deep purple. It's a very deep purple. It looks like it has a purple with some little bits of black. It's Heartland Line Brand. Um, the colorway is Hot Springs Fuentes Tamales Tamales. Turn Molly's. I guess that's how you see it. But it's 147 Hot Springs. It's the colorway. I wish you guys could see the actual color. Um, it's real pretty. And so it was. it's a close. It's a close. It's darker as well. It's kind of close to some of the purples that's in this. It's showing up as blue, but it's not. That's, that's purples. So it's it's close to some of the purples that's in this um uh Noro. So yeah, so three skeins of Noro silk garden using a size G hook and um and it's 
I, I'm lo I love this, this pattern. It's just so pretty. So very pretty and lacy. Um, and this is crochet. You, may, you can make very beautiful things with crochet. Don't let people uh, turn you off of crochet. Beautiful. So, yeah. So that's what I'm doing now with this is I'm working on the border, which well, I'm going to try to use up that holes as much as that skein as I can on the border portion of that shawl. The other work in progress that I have, and it's, I'm using Caron Simply Soft, the one pounder for this one. And I also use some wool from eBay. Um, Forest Greener is the name of the seller. Uh, it's, it's a Canadian, maybe it's a Canadian shop. But this is some um, that's left over from a project. This is Icelandic wool. And it's, it's very squishy. And you can't really see these colors. It's like a lot of mobs. And it's more, just a tad bit more vibrant than that. But I use this on uh, part of the blanket. So I'll show you the core of the blanket. Um, the blanket, you start with the butterfly. You make the butterfly. Then you attach a yarn to the butterfly. And you form a granny square. If you've ever done a granny square, I'm just catching up where I was at because the uh, Hook came out so um, it pulled out of your stitch. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Usually I put a stitch marker to hold my stitch, but you know, sometimes you just don't feel like doing stuff. I mean, it's only a couple of stitches, and as fast as I crochet, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, so you start with the butterfly. Okay. You guys can see my butterfly. But here's the butterfly. Okay. You start with a butterfly and on the bottom set of wings, see the bottom set of wings down here? That's where you do your granny square. You attach your granny square like that. Um using the butterfly as your center point. I added a flower and a leaf to it today. I didn't leave any ends. Um, but I'll get around to it. So I added a flower and leaf <clears throat> to it today, and then I can just go around and around and around until I use up most of this most of the skein to form the um to make this baby blanket. And then I have that's the other work in progress. So I have two works in progress. This shawl I'll finish it tonight. And then I'll start working in earnest on this um, baby blanket because I have to do a yellow baby cocoon with the yellow hat, yellow hat and yellow footies. Um, I gotta get that done too. Someone requested. I'm so sorry, I'm tired. Uh, but what am I gonna be doing next? Well. After I finish these two projects, I have to do a black, just a basic black scarf. It should take no time because it's going to be crocheting. And then, so I have the yellow, the yellow cocoon set, a black scarf, a, a two by a four by two rib hat in carrot. But the brim of the hat is going to be done um, with the size party size for knit needle so I have a tighter brim this time around and I'm so sorry I just don't. then I got two bags that I pulled out I pulled out my caracal from the attic so it's still back there in that stack right back there I'm going to be spinning that after I spin up these two bags here. One is a uh, rising wool that I got from International International Fibers when she was in business. It's, it's mixed with Bruce Wayne, who is uh, used to be my packer. 
Um, but when Emil closed and they sold a herd, I let him get sold with the rest of the herd. So, it's right on wool mixed with our Bruce Wayne's alpaca. And, um, so this is going to be spawned. And then, it's a, a real, because Bruce Wayne's mostly gray, so this is like a chocolate and gray blend. That should be, end up being real pretty. So we got Bruce's fiber. And then we have a bag of fiber. This is Angora Rabbit. I got this from the Mount Powhatan, from um, Mount Period. When we went to Mount Period one year, there was a girl there that she was getting ready to go back to college for her doctoral program. I don't say girl. She was, she was probably a couple years older than me. But she was young at heart. So she had Angora rabbits, and she was selling the rabbits, and she was selling all the fur that she had been collecting. Dirt cheap. I probably got $500 worth for this rabbit fiber for 80 bucks. Yes, $80. So I had it blended with some, what is this? Some gray Icelandic, some gray curly fleece, and some white merino. It is super, 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 super soft. But I'm going to have to get me one of those um, mask things like when I'm cutting the grass to put on my face while I'm spinning because it's angora flies everywhere. So this is, that's probably something that I'll be spinning on the weekends when the weather's nice outside on the porch because the rabbit is very flyaway. So those are the next two spins after I get all this stuff plied up. And um, so I'll probably start. I actually might put the Angora up and pull something else out and wait until summertime when I know it's going to be warm because y'all know I hate the cold so that I can spin it up. I'll probably pull down one of the um, bags, one of the other smaller bags of fiber or bumps. Like there's a couple of bumps in there that I can pull down, a cordial that I got from Maryland Superwolf. And I could pull one of those down and spin those instead. And that's pretty much all that's going with me craft wise. Um, oh God. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna keep yawning. And I don't know I don't not know why talking to you guys stimulate me to yawn. I don't know why. <laughs> because I am a little tired, but I haven't been yawning at all <laughs> until I started doing this video. So yeah, so I need to get back so I can finish my new shawl, my shawl, and then I can start fit working on another project. Because like I said, what I'm going to do is, I'll do a project, then I'm going to do something for me. And so far, I've got, this will be my second shawl, which was a shawl that was on my list of things to make for myself. And when I finish that shawl, then since this pattern is so pretty and so easy, I figure I'll be going, that's what I'm going to do with the Jane C. Brett. I'm going to do virus shawls with the Jane C. Brett. Yep. I'm going to take the crazy color one and do those together. But yeah, that's what I'm doing with these acrylic scraps. These acrylic scraps is back there. You see the Jane C. Brett. It was a full balls, but... On top of the um, hand spun bin, there is like all the partially used skeins of yarn that I have accumulated over the last two months. And, um, but yeah, I'm going to make virus shells out of that JC bread. Now, um, I've added things to the Etsy store. Um, I did a new listing and it's called a $25 mystery hand spun skein. So basically you pay $25 and you get a skein of my hand spun. It's a surprise. You don't know what you're getting. Um, I can guarantee you the yardage would be over 175 yards. It could be anywhere from 175 yards up to 300 and something yards. Um, my goal is to get rid of as much of my hand spun in that big gray bin back there as possible. Um, 
Now the nicer hands, the nicer hand sponges, which is stuff that I purchased to speed, like those will be sold at what they're worth. But other things like for some people alpaca is a exotic fiber. For me it was readily available and it's most of the fiber in my stash is alpaca fiber that was given to me by, by my friend that owned the mill. So for me alpaca is not an exotic fiber. It's what I usually I'm spending merino nineteen um Micron Merino and Alpaca Blends or just the Merino or the Alpaca. Um, I also have fiber that I have at Falkland and Romney, um, Ramboulet, BFL. Um, the BFL is white so it was purchased It was purchased so that I could either spin up and then dye the yarn or dye and then spin it. But it's for my private stash, you know. Um, I still haven't added fiber to the the shop, I'm still working on that. For the next update, I'll probably have some fibers. Now, most of my fibers are natural, natural colors, natural whites, natural creams, grays, browns, um, true blacks, things like that. I prefer natural fibers, so that's mostly what I have. It's going to be offered um, through Etsy. Is the not is natural fibers? The stuff that I've dyed. I'm probably going to end up spending most of that myself because people really didn't seem to be interested in purchasing it for me. I use Falkland Base and Romney Base for the fiber that I dyed up. So I have no problem with spending my own stuff. I love spending my stuff that I dyed and that my husband dyed. So. But, um, but the natural stuff, I, I want to try and get the stash down some. So I will be probably doing four ounce bags. I gotta get some more bags so that I can start and weigh it. Cause I, got, I finally got more batteries for my scale. So I gotta get my more bags so I can weigh it out and put it in four ounce braids for like you know like each bag I'm gonna label it by the month. Like so it'll be easy to figure out what's what. So it'll be like January, February, March, April, May, and so you know January would be the big white one, which is Alpaca, North Country Cheviot, and those were the two white blankets that I had. No, and it's in the CVM as well. There's a CVM in there too. Um, and then I have the Grays, which was uh, Panda. I think Panda's is by herself too. Her first and her second year blankets. Some pandas in there somewhere. She's a churro um, cordial mix, I believe. And then you had the browns, which are alpacas. Then I have a border leisters, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. So, we'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out. But the fiber that I got done at Ecoview Fiber Mill is absolutely freaking gorgeous. Um, I can't wait to, to separate some of that out for me to spend. And then, you know, I can tell you guys how it spins up and everything. But I'm going to be doing a lot of spinning, which is why I need that bin empty. Um, so go to the shop and buy a mystery skein. Um, you won't regret it. So I'm going to let you guys go. I'm under 30 minutes, so that's good. So I'll talk to you later when I have some more stuff to show you.